My name is Patrick O'Donnell. I'm an author and historian. And my latest book is They Dared Return. The book is about um, the Jewish five, five best friends that narrowly escaped Nazi Germany and fled to the United States while their families were trapped back in, in uh, Nazi Germany. Um, when the war broke out, the five were motivated for largely for revenge to strike back at the Reich um, and to somehow make a difference in the war. The, um, the main character of this book is a very dear friend of mine. His name is Frederick Mayer. And, you know, Mayer's story, as well as the other five, are just really quite absolutely incredible. They tried to find a way into the U.S. Mer uh, military, but uh, through various reasons, they were classified as enemy aliens, which gave them uh, an additional hardship. So they all volunteered, eventually became part of the U.S. military. And then through one way or another, they were they uh, joined the OSS as volunteers. The OSS was America's first uh, secret service or uh, CIA. It also had a special operations component. And Mayer in the five joined something called the German Operational Group, which was effectively a, a dirty dozen of sorts of um, of, of, of first Green Berets in America, and um, the. The German operational group went through various fits and starts, but Mayer and the five were determined to strike back, and they mutinied effectively and uh, found their own uh, missions behind the lines. And they dared return is about three of those missions, but specifically something called the Greenup mission, where Mayer and his best friend Hans Winberg uh, dropped behind the lines on the side of a German uh, of a glacier in Austria uh, to monitor the rail traffic near the Brenner Pass and gather information. And, um, you know, their story is quite incredible because Mayer actually dresses as a German officer to pull off this intelligence coup. And they destroy 26 trains through airstrikes. And they gather information. And in the end, um, their efforts change the course of the war. Uh, by affecting the surrender of a large number of German troops as well as Innsbruck, Austria. Frederick Mayer inspired me to write the book. Um, I, I've had the luxury of interviewing and meeting thousands of probably the most incredible people that ever walked this earth. I've interviewed 3,000 World War II veterans over the course of uh, nearly 20 years. And Frederick Mayer was probably one of the most amazing people that I ever met. And uh, he's 90 years young today and uh, extremely vibrant and just a very positive person um, that chops wood every day, you know, remarkably has a girlfriend and just is an optimist. And uh, he's inspiring. Uh, I, I think that people that are able to bend history are what inspire me. And Frederick Mayer is one of those people that, against all odds, changed uh, the course of history and took a situation which most people could never endure. He was tortured for, for several days, lost his teeth, tortured upside down, put it waterboarded, something we're so familiar with today, but literally turned the tables on his, on his Gestapo handlers and uh, convinced the governor of, of Austria that the war was over and to surrender. And I think uh, that's what really inspired me. And the book is initially about revenge, where these men are trying to get back at the Reich, but it comes full circle and it's about forgiveness. And I, I think that that's, uh, that's truly, that's really uh, inspiring as well. My routine, uh, I don't necessarily have one. Um, I, I travel to inspire my creativity. The last book I wrote, I had a massive fit of writer's block, so I bought a 30-day a rail pass on Amtrak, and I traveled the United States and completely eliminated the writer's block and wrote a large portion of the book. So uh, travel creates creativity. Um, I like to, to sort of travel as well as um, I like white noise. I don't like to be completely alone. So 
Starbucks or Barnes and Noble or Borders or places that I've written my books, literally in the cafeteria or the cafe section of the store or uh, just in a small, you know, in a comfortable chair. So that's sort of my routine, if you will. My um, interest in history began when I was four years old and I picked up a World War II book instead of a dinosaur book. And I was drawn in from that point on and I've I've been into World War II history and, and military history since that point. I had a library of three or 400 books when I was 10 years old, and it just kind of continued from there. College, I built on it, but it was after college that I began interviewing World War II veterans as a hobby every weekend. And it would be the members of the elite infantry units, the 82nd Airborne, the 101st, the Rangers, and then that led to the OSS and, um, and, and, and other spies, and it just kind of went from there. Since my whole life focuses in on nonfiction, I love to read fiction <laughs> whenever possible to get away from it. So as I was coming in here today, I noticed that we had uh, Clive Cussler prominently on the shelf, who's one of my favorite fiction writers. I mean, everything, it's like Jacques Cousteau meets James Bond. So it's uh, action-packed. I, I love uh, Cussler um, in, you know, the classics, of course, like Dickens. I even went to the Dickens Museum, which is right around the corner from here, which was kind of cool before I came. And then um, from a nonfiction perspective, I like a, a guy named John Mosier who's written a, a book on called The Blitzkrieg Myth and The Myth of the Great War. Some it's very good analysis, some sort of out-of-the-box thinking, which I found pretty refreshing from his perspective. It's two projects that I'm working on right now. One, I'm not going to get too specific on them. One is on uh, arguably one of them. Um, one of Britain's great spies. It's an untold story that was an inspiration for, for quite a few things. And uh, it's a story that I've been pursuing for the last six years. And I uncovered it accidentally while going through some OSS files. Let's just say he liked fast cars and beautiful women. <laughs> the second project I'm working on, it, it actually involved uh, some of the trip that I was just on, and it, it covers the Rangers and their exploits, and it's about um, men that change the course of history, and uh, you know, and heroes, the things that I've, the, the books that I've written are sort of the through line that runs through all of them is you know just sort of ordinary men that have somehow changed history in one way or another, and. Uh, that continues on my on, on my next two projects.